Hi, I'm Emma. Welcome to my Aquatic Roleplay channel. I hope to bring you a different theme every week of different games that we play that's got a certain theme around them or a whole story that we bring to life in the water. This week we're doing Little Mathematician, so we're going to learn about capacity, um, ordering of size, ordering of numbers, um, we're going to learn recognition of numbers, matching, things like that. Okay, and we're going to do all that through the beautiful skill of swimming. So equipment wise, you're going to need um, a small, medium and large vessel container that, con that you can pour water into or ping pong balls. We're going to need some balls, some, so I'm using ping pong balls today, but you could use ball pool balls. Um, you're going to need some kind of well. My well's floated off. Let's see if we can see it down there. See down there, the purple hoop down there. Um, so all the, um, all the things are in the description where you can buy them. Um, so let's start. So first of all, we get the children in, we have a welcome and we teach them what we're going to be learning that day. So today I'm going to do front paddle and back paddle. We're going to learn their legs, arms and a bit of breathing and then we're going to do some jumps and um, that's all we're going, to, we're going to have time today. We're going to really concentrate on that paddle. Um, let them wear whatever age you let them wear. They might go it alone, they might wear it age. It's completely up to you and up to them. So, front paddle. When they warm up, we're going to teach them to make sure they pull their arms backwards so they travel forwards. We're going to get them to get their legs straight so when they're kicking, it's just a nice, floppy, fluttery kick. Um, get them to blow bubbles, preferably with the face in. They don't always like it, so bubbles with the mouth in is good, then the nose. They don't like doing it they can maybe dip the cheeks while we're blowing bubbles or their ears um, we're going to get their hair wet get them to lean back and get their ears under the water because when we're on our back we want our head back and our chest up knees down when we're kicking after that we'll get started so we'll give every child um, a cup and a bucket okay and their job is to see how many cups full of water will fill the bucket. So ask them first, get them thinking, hmm, I don't know. And it, this really helps with their reasoning and their, you know, being able to follow instructions later on because they can reason everything and they can get everything in order. They know what you're asking for, big, small, medium, kind of, it really helps. So we're going to get them to swim out to the well, which is now floated off down there, but you can put your well wherever. You could, the instructor could stay at the well to help them or whichever you prefer. They're going to fill up their cup, they're going to carry it back on their back. So they'll be laying on the back, head back, chest up, and when they're kicking they're going to try and keep their knees under the water and make a nice tiny little splash at the top of the water, not too big, nobody likes swimming through the splashes. When they come back they'll pour it into their bucket and they'll keep going until the bucket is full to the brim. Um, and then when they're full, when they've filled it up, is that what they expected? You know, um, how many did it take? Was they surprised by that? Okay, it just gets them thinking about it. So then next time, oh, they can pour the water over your head if you want, or their mums or the dads or them, their own. Um, just have a bit of fun, make them giggle. Next time, we're going to get some ping pong balls in and you can do it in either vessel. I'm going to do it in the cup today because it's going to take four ping pong balls to fill it. We've already done three trips for this. It's just going to get a bit too much if we do more. So they're going to swim out, front paddle, and they're going to come back below in it. So not only are we doing the arms, legs and the body position, we're now doing the breathing as well, um, and a bit better body position because they're going to obviously have the head close to the water. Um, <clears throat> so once they've done that, are they surprised by that? Do they think it would take more balls? Do they think it would take less? What do they think about that? Um, next, we're going to move on to the whole group filling up the bucket. Um, I think I've got my bucket a bit too big this week, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're going to see how many of the medium-sized buckets does it take to fill the large bucket. I suggest every time they bring a bucket back, because there's going to be lots of hands on deck for this one, they put a ping pong ball in as well. So you can just count the ping pong balls at the end to know how many buckets it took. I'm really surprised by that. Maybe they want to pour the whole bucket of water over the instructor's head. Um, that really would make them laugh. After that, I just won't get away with not doing jumps with my kids. So we're going to get them to climb out, let them have a go. You know, if, 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 they're, if they're old enough, if they, they're trying to scramble up things themselves, let them have a go. You know, elbows, tummy, knees, 
let them have three attempts while you help them. Maybe just give them a knee under the feet so they can scramble out themselves. It's really good for them to get to learn to hold on and use it. And it's good for the muscle definition, the tone and the balance, everything. Let them have a go themselves. Kids get so much things done from these days. Give them, let them have a go. So we're, first of all, we're going to start with a small jump. They're going to do a little jump in, clearing the wall, of course. They might do it sitting down and flopping forwards. They're going to do a medium sized jump and then a big jump. And if you tell them before, we're going to do one small, one medium, one large. They can kind of guess their interpretation of what small is, what medium is and what large is. And again, it all helps with that thought process and future following of instructions. Once we've done our jumps, um, if we've still got time, um, we can get in the foam numbers. So we've got some foam numbers today. Um, maybe they could um, swim and collect all the number ones, or they could go get all the number twos, or maybe you could get them to come and order them at the wall, one to nine. Um, we've also got the big um, floor mats with the numbers in. I'm going to get those out today. I've not got these on the side of me right now. Um, but maybe we could lay them out one to nine and they could come and match up. Well, which one does the number five match to? And let them do that. And again, they're learning the swimming and they're enjoying it. And if they're scared and fearful, they're going to be thinking about what they're doing, not the swimming, not the water. And it takes the mind off it. And it's really important with people and children who are, who are a bit aquaphobic to try to take the mind off it till they get used to it because it is a weird sensation in the water. Um, yeah, so once we've done that, we'll get them all back together again. We'll recap what we did. You know, how did we do our arms? Did we stretch them really long or do we do really, really short ones? Do we do medium sized ones? Again, with that ordering, so they get to know what the instruction is. We're doing long arms. Did we do our legs slowly? Did we do them quickly? Um, things like that. So we get together and the bubbles. Um, We'll recap everything on our back did we put our head right back or was it up or was it down um, and then we're going to sing some songs um, great ones for this week would be number songs so one two three four five I caught a fish alive and um, three little ducks went swimming one day three little men in a fine saucer um, hickory dickory dock the mouse ran at the clock and what a great idea is while we've got these numbers in let's hold them up you know like Two little ducks went swimming one day and they'll recognise the two and the two and slowly they'll all start to make connections up. They might even know the number, um, you know, what number's this? And they might know it, you never know. Um, so once we've done songs, we're going to climb out safely. Um, moving on to older children, if you're in with older children, you could use a kickboard and they could have to carry the cup of water back on the kickboard with the face in to try and maintain a good body position without spilling the water. Um, for the livelier classes, the ones um, that are going to find it, you could even get them to swim back crawl, turn the balance of the cup on the head while they're doing their arms. It might be easy if you just have a ball in, um, see if they can get back without the ball falling out. Um, other things you can do, so, Again, with the older children, I mean, you're talking about the key stage two children. Um, you could do front crawl, um, learning three times table. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Um, so they get to know that six, nine, twelve is three times table. Or maybe they're maybe they're um, unilateral breathers and they're going to do it every four. Um, and they learn the four times four, eight, twelve. So you can have lots of fun with the numbers. Um, I know a lot of my kids love to do the times tables while they're swimming. It just gives them, they just, they just like it and it, you know, it helps out a little bit as well. Um, with the younger children and the babies, um, we're going to use shapes. We're going to put these lovely um, edu shape mirrors we're going to use. So we can do bubbles underwater, get them to look back again, do the jumps, the small, medium, large jumps again. Um, we're going to get lots of different sized balls in. So we've got like little balls, medium sized ball, big balls, giant ball. We've got the cups that they can play with. I mean, the sounds lovely as it goes from one cup to the other, get them to listen to that. It all helps get them not be afraid of the water, be a bit more, you know. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got the cups, we've got the phone numbers for the babies, but as with all the things for the babies, You've got to watch them because we don't want chunks of sponge being swallowed. So, yeah, so for the younger ones, we've got the mirrors, we've got the cups, we've got the foam, things. They can play in the hoop. Some of my kids love to try and jump in the hoop or even dive through the hoop. Some of the old ones, they love it. So while we've got that out, we'll probably use that as well. Um, 
yeah if you've got any comments please leave me some comments um i'd love if you've got an idea for a theme send me that because I, I love a challenge um i've got lots more to go how you think something else could be brought into the lesson or something you think i could do better or um something you need help with anything we're all improving we're all in this together we're all here for water safety and getting children to love life um, please subscribe to my channel